Have you ever read Daniel chapter 12? It's one of those chapters whereby, if you ever need a reminder of what's to come, you have to read Daniel chapter 12. If you ever need a reason to be more focused and determined to live right, well, read Daniel 12, and it's a, it's a chapter that will give you plenty reason to focus on things above and not on the things of the earth. The Amplified Translation paints a more vivid picture of this revelation in Daniel 12 because the Bible says from verse 1 to verse 3, Now at that end time Michael, the great angelic prince who stands guard over the children of your people will arise. And there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. But at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book of life will be rescued. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake resurrect these two everlasting life, but some to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Those who are spiritually wise will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. My main prayer request to the Lord is not that my name should be found written in the book of life. It's obviously something I want, but it's not my main prayer point. My main prayer point is not even that I should escape the distresses which verse 1 describes as having never occurred since there was a nation until that time. You see, my main prayer point is, Lord, help me. Keep me alert. Open my eyes and ears so that I do not miss the signs you are giving us as your children. And here's why it's my main point. You see, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 17, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. What a shame. What a disaster it would be for any believer to miss this sign. We've been told here that in the last days, God will pour. He will release a steady flow of his spirit on all flesh. But what a shame it would be for any believer to miss this sign. What a shame it would be to miss out on the outpouring of God's wonderful spirit. That's why my main prayer point is, Lord, don't let me miss out on you pouring out your spirit. Don't let me miss out on this wonderful sign. We all know that we're given many different signs about what will happen in the last days, how people will act, how people will be unfaithful, how there will be a nation rising against nation. But those are not the signs I want to focus on. I do not want to miss the sign of God pouring out his spirit in the last days. I instead want to be a recipient. I want to be a partaker. I want the Holy Spirit to flood my life. So what is it that you are focused on in the last days? Because if you're not praying and watching, then that day of the Lord will sneak up on you like a thief in the night. Is it not a scary thought that there are those among us who say the name of Jesus. They stand in praise and worship and sing the name of Jesus. They stand behind the pulpit and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have the hat, t-shirt, and shoes to match. And I mean on the outside, they look like disciples. But on the inside, their hearts are far away from the Lord. Isn't it a scary thought that Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? 
cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So you see, there are people who will look like they are in the church. They will look like they love the Lord. But looks is as far as it goes. There is no substance to them. No real conviction to repent and live their lives for God. So my message to you is that you should make sure that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't be caught up on whether you look good or holy to other people. Instead, be caught up in really living for God. Take note of the events happening in and around this world. Take note of the strange things happening, but keep your focus on developing a deep, meaningful, and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. The focus for our lives should be to make sure that our individual relationships with God are in good standing. Saints, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days, perilous times will come. The world will be unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, among so many other things. Now, whether these are the last days or not, whether this is the 11th hour or not, you and I as believers need to make sure that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can only enter the kingdom of heaven through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus who explicitly said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need to make sure that we are not found to be the ones who the Bible states. Many will say, Lord, Lord, I have done many wonders in your name. But God will say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Don't be in that group of people who are told to depart from the presence of God. Seek him today while there is still time. So rather than look at each and everything happening in the world and focusing your time and energy with a checklist, focus your time and energy on seeking God. That should be our only focus. To know Jesus, to seek his face, to meditate on his word, to have a right relationship with the Lord. Aim to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because if you don't, then the words depart from me will be an eternal sentence to the darkness of hell.